Let's give him a choir hand. If, if you ever heard of something called an epiphany, uh, it's like uh, something you didn't expect to happen. I didn't expect to see all the choir here in the second service. <laughs> So, so instead of being looked at it and said in a negative way, this is such a positive a, a, amen. I gotta, I gotta find out how much did Reverend June pay them. <laughs> is that all it takes? Find out the fees. We can work that out. <laughs> <I'm going. laughs> but it looks good, and, and most of the same people. The gifts uh, and such from uh, this morning. So anyway, this is this is good. I'm going to say a couple words right quick in prayer. I thank God the way the service went this morning. Uh, everybody did such a marvelous job. Just starting from the very beginning. When I say that deacons on on the up, uh, the, the, the preaching and the praising, uh, it just shows what God can do. Even though they were in empty seats, our focus is always on those who are here because God is going to do his part. Amen? Amen? Just very quickly, Father, we thank you for the time that you've allowed us this day. The amazing grace that continues to flow in this place. We have no inkling, no understanding of how you do what you do, but we're so thankful and so grateful. Pray now that your spirit continue to bind us together. That's only you can do. Teach us, Lord, to love one another deeply according to your word and your will. We give you praise and glory in the name of Jesus and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. This is the second part of our service, and we're being fed twice. I want to introduce a young man. I'll give him that accolade today. Young man, and he's the epitome of a gentleman to me. I love his spirit because he's a God-fearing man, and I love the way the gentleness that I see in him, even with his wife, that, you know, like, they're two peas in a pod. <laughs> and I thank God for him because he's always smiling. I just want to present to some and introduce to others our Aunt Reverend June Makabali. Is it true that you will know a person by the things that makes him cry? Well, I remember when our dog died. It was really a sad moment. And every one of us in the family shed tears. And sometimes we also cry over the little things. Isn't it? Like sad songs, sad movies, sad stories. Just like a week or two weeks ago when uh, Golden State lost the championship. <laughs> I did not say tears. I'm just sad, you know. <laughs> anyway, really we can that there are so many low 
moaning and grieving people around us. That we can so relate that we ask ourselves, how can we help them? Yes. And I know my brothers and sisters, the best expression of love, compassion, and sympathy that we fall short of expressing them, that sometimes it's much better and easier to cry, to shed tears, than to comfort one who is in grief. Because we can think of the right word to say, the right gesture to express our sympathy. But you know, there is someone I know who specializes, who's for them, who is an expert in giving comfort, none other than but our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That's why now, please turn your Bibles to the Gospel of Jesus according to John chapter 11, verses 32 to 37. And I'll be reading in NIV and here it is. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how we love him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? May the Lord bless our hearts upon hearing a portion of his holy word. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we praise and give you glory to your name. For you are worthy. We thank you, Lord God, for your goodness and grace. May your presence fill this place once again, O Lord, and may your anointing fall upon your servant. Lord God, teach us your ways that we may find favor in your sight. Yes. Enable us with your word, O Lord. Strengthen us with your power. We give you back all the glory, the honor, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. My brothers and sisters, I firmly and strongly believe that Jesus is the only source of our joy. Yeah. Being the man of sorrow, he is so acquainted to man's grief that he is our only comforter. Oh yes, our Lord Jesus is so striken by grief, deeply hurt, experienced agonizing pain. He was despised and rejected. He is a man of tears. And we can ask what it took to touch the heart of the Son of God caused him to weep. What are the reasons? Why Jesus wept? When Jesus wept. John 11 35 says, Jesus wept. It is the shortest verse in the Bible, but I know you will agree it is the most sincere the truest expression of his feelings. Why? Because Jesus wept for his friends. Yes. That is my first point. John 11, 32 to 35, we can read, when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and trouble. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. And Jesus wept. Was Jesus lonely because Lazarus died? Perhaps, but I do not think so. Was Jesus lonely because they lost their faith? 
Maybe, but I don't think so. But I believe right on the mark, Jesus was moved at their sorrow. The word well is a word used to describe that Jesus literally shed tears, which means not only sympathy, but it was empathy. Feeling what they felt, it was tears of real compassion. I say Jesus wept for his friends. You see, my brothers and sisters, our Savior's tears encourages us to express our true emotion that when words fail, tears flow. Tears have language of its own that needs no interpreter. Tears are not self-conscious, for it can happen while we are seeing praise for God's goodness and mercy. Or oftentimes, when we pray, unloading our burdens, knowing that He is our burden bearer, our only comporter, our helper. In Psalms 56, 8 says, about our tears, he puts them in his bottles and enters them into the records. He keeps on our lives. Oh yes, God never forgets all those crises, all those lonely moments where tears were shed. You know, Jesus could have opted just to stay and did not go to Bethany. But nothing can stop him because they are his friends. That it is so important to give them comfort. 2 Corinthians 1 3 says, He is the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. Yes. The God who heals, who restores, who wipes our tears and heals our broken hearts. He is our shepherd that leads us to another season of life. Yes. The season where we could be comporter, the empathizer shedding tears for someone. And even in Romans 12, 15 says, Weep with them that weep. That after we have been through the tragedies, the storms in life, we would remember how God made us through the highways and byways of our lives. You know, if there is one person who should be more caring, who should be more generous, more encouraging, more compassionate, more comforting. May that person be us, isn't it? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You see, the, re the recipient of God's salvation, God's goodness and mercy and grace, that we are not the lonely ones, but the cheaters. We are not the sick ones, my brothers and sisters, but the one who takes care, isn't it? We are not the one who are lost, seeking or searching, but the ones who are found, who are leading, who are encouraging. You see, we are not the one who is in need, but so privileged to have more than enough to share and to give. You know, times that we share with the loneliness that we wept for them, Jesus wept for his friends, I say, we cannot practice compassion very much until see others through Jesus' eyes. A songwriter said, if I can see the world the way you see, I just know I serve you faithfully looking through the eyes of Jesus. Yeah. Yes, I say again, Jesus wept for his friends. Proverbs 18, 24 says, but there is a friend closer than a brother. Yes. That's why my brothers and sisters, let us remember our friends, old and new, long lost or the new found friend. And yes, I say, Jesus wept, not for the dead, but for the living. He wept not for the one in the cave of death, but for those in the cave of fear. He wept for those who although alive were dead, he wept for those who though were free were prisoners held captive by their fear of death. Again I say, he wept for his friends 
for us. There's nothing Jesus would do for his friends, isn't it? Stones have never stood in God's way. They did not in Bethany 2,000 years ago. And stones don't stand his way today, my friends. He called Lazarus out of the grave of death. And he is still calling us out of the grave of fear. Amen. Amen. Why Jesus wept? Jesus wept not only for his friends, but also Jesus wept for his foes. Luke 13, 34, it says there, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you kill the prophets and stones those who sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you are not willing. Also in Luke 1941, we can read, as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. Yes, my brothers and sisters, Jesus wept for his friends and foes alike. Let us take a look at John 1, verse 10 to 11, and it says, He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not, and his own received him not. His own turned away from his preaching. His own turned away from his gift of eternal salvation, from his unconditional love, from his compassion. You know, they did not just turn their backs on him and went far from him. They even committed horrible acts against Jesus. And what it is, they bound him, isn't it? They arrested him, tried him illegally, mocked him, and even spat on his face, humiliated him, and crucified him. Yes. What did Jesus do in return after the sorrowful acts? Yet, my friends, my brothers and sisters, he looked over the city of Jerusalem and he wept for the people of that city. Yes. He says, preach hard to the people love most and also wept for them. You know, my brothers and sisters, it is one thing to weep for your friends, but it's quite another thing to weep for those who sin against you, isn't it? It will be a completely different story, I say to you. We can sympathize, we can empathize for our friends. We can even add extra mile by sympathizing and empathizing. For the people we don't know, for the strangers, for the people who are in need. But to add a mile to that extra mile being good to our enemies, to people who are unfair or violated our good being. Oh my God, just the thought of it make our blood boils, isn't it? Our tendency is to make even and even render worse. A bigger stone to throw back, perhaps, isn't it? Yes, Offering your other cheek after being slapped is ridiculous, isn't it? It's not logical. Truly, my friends, my beloved, being a Christian is not only hard, but it is also impossible. And it is always only by the grace of God that all things are possible. Yes. Amazing grace that separates us from the world. Yes. Challenges and battles in life, lost a friend, left you for somebody else, a business partner cheated you. I know the hurt is there because this involved a loss, and for others, a sense of betrayal. But once the grace is applied, you may just realize you did not lose your friend. You just have to be more understanding and learn to know the real purpose behind grace and mercy. I say again, Jesus wept for his cause and the principle behind Romans 12, 14 to 19. As for those who try to make your life miserable, bless them. Don't curse, just bless. Amen? He says, don't pay 
To, don't pay back a bad turn by bad turn to anyone. See that your public behavior is beyond criticism. Live at peace with everyone. Never take vengeance into our hands. And Ephesians 4, 31 to 32 commands us that let there be no more bitter resentment or anger, no more shouting or slander. Let there be no bad feeling of any kind among you. Be kind to each other. Be compassionate. Be as ready to forgive as God Christ has forgiven you. Oh yes, my brothers and sisters, it's a radical approach and we should be unselfish, willing to listen, to negotiate, to yield, to confess, to forgive, to submit. We can do all these things, but to forget, to move on, much more to care for them, to the extent that I weep for them, I don't think so. That's why I will give or allow my foe, my enemy, that bad person, that gossiper, that arrogant, that rude and mean person, and then I will care for them, weep for them, giving something that they don't deserve. I say again, my brothers and sisters, Jesus wept for his force. And you know what? That was his approach. That was Jesus' approach. And yes, it's always easier said than done. But the fact, it brings about the reality of grace. Receiving what we don't deserve. And humility replaces pride. Because a thankful spirit cancels out arrogance. And maybe you will ask why. Because somebody received what he does not deserve. And what is that, my friends? It is grace. It is grace. Maybe, may we be reminded, my brothers and sisters, that all of us, that we were former foes of God, and though we didn't ask for forgiveness, or we haven't asked for it, God has already forgiven us. Amen? Amen. In Ephesians 2.4, it says, But because of His great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive in Christ even when we are dead in sins and it is by grace you have been saved. My brothers and sisters, consider for a moment how much we have been forgiven. If we can ascribe to live a life of gratitude, perhaps we forgive and forget. We could care for those people who have hurt us. And like our Savior, we could also have for our boss. Psalms 126, 5 to 6 says, They that sow in tears shall reap joy. He that goes forth and weeps, bring precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheep with him. You know, bringing them near to the throne of grace, Follow Jesus' example. Do it by weeping. Do it through tears. I say, let the fountain of tears cleanse all those hurts and aches until forgiveness and compassion flow from within our hearts. We become more forgiving, more merciful, changing our outlook. We become pure in heart. We can now love regardless. The more radical the change, the greater the joy. That's why I say Jesus wept for his force, and by God's grace, we can do the same. Amen? Amen? That's why I say again when Jesus wept, Jesus wept for his friends. Jesus wept for his force. And furthermore, the last one, my last point, Jesus wept for the fellowship with his Father. Matthew 27, 46, we can read about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabatani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
In all his life, Jesus had never known a time when he was not in fellowship. When he was not in fellowship with his father, he is always in communion, sweet and solitude. John 17, 5 says, And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Imagine, my brothers and sisters, the feeling that now, for the first time, this fellowship has been broken. Jesus was abandoned by his Father. I think none is more painful than rejection, isn't it? You see, the sweet moment of fellowship was replaced by abandonment. He was despised by men, denied by friends, and abandoned by the Father. Oh my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At one word, the Father could have sent a host of angels to save his son, isn't it? But the Father could have struck him with lightning the soldiers that were around Jesus. But I tell you, my brothers and sisters, truly, it is not only Jesus who wept bitterly that moment, but most of all, it is the Father. He withheld everything that He could do to save His only begotten Son. Why? Why the Father did this? Because the Father loved you and me. Because the Father loves us so much. The Father who wants to show that He cares in spite of our failures. The Father who is at His best when we are at our worst. The Father whose grace is the strongest when our devotion is weakest. That's why I say, my brothers and sisters, Jesus wept for His fellowship with the Father. King David wrote in Psalms 51, 17, it says, The sacrifice of God are broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Oh yes, my brothers and sisters, the best king of Israel has fallen the burdens, but he prays. He prayed to God, and God restored his fellowship with him, for no one can fall beyond God's love and forgiveness. That's why the fellowship that was broken, Isaiah 59, 1 to 2 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear is heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separately, separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Fellowship that once so sweet and fresh has dried and become barren, O oh God forbids. It was said that broken spirit dries the bones and place our hearts down in the dumps. The kind brokenness that we choose to run away or hide from the Father, thinking that it will stay still, the Father will forget about us. But Isaiah 30, 18 says, my brothers and sisters, And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore they will be exalted that he may mercy upon you. Oh yes, my brothers and sisters, how can we not return? How can we not long for the fellowship of the Father to be restored, isn't it? Yeah. I love to share this article to you, my brothers and sisters. The real followers of Christ do things that are Christ-like. It is the fruit of their constant fellowship with God. You know, the world of pains and troubles may remove their sight away from Christ, but forsaking Christ would be too painful thing to imagine. For one's life is for God and God alone. Amen. First John 1 John 1.7 say, says, but, he, but if we walk in the light and He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. That's why I encourage everyone, my brothers and sisters, 
let us always remember when Jesus wept, Jesus wept for his friends, for his foes, for his fellowship with the Father. The measure of a man's strength is what it takes to make him weep. For what? For why? For when do you weep? Amen. Let us pray. Hallelujah, Lord God. O mag we magnify your name. O truly, Lord God, there is none like you. Nothing compares to you. O hallelujah to your love and faithfulness. And from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Thank you, Lord God, for all the things that you have done for us and for not forsaking us. Lord, thank you for your word that reminded us how precious and important each and every one has in your kingdom. Thank you for being there for us. Help us, O oh Lord God, to rely only by your grace that we may wipe your tears by surrendering our lives to you. By giving the highest regard of our relationship with your Son, our only friend. Lord God, help us to be more forgiving, to be more compassionate, to be more loving and caring. And finally, Lord, we pray that for every fear that you have shed will remind us to walk with you. Thank you, Father, for caring enough for us and correcting us. Thank you for pulling us back and starting us a new path. Lord God, let us appreciate your love, even when the correction is painful. Oh, truly, you desire for us to know more of you. And Lord God, allow us, through our lives, may we touch your heart and truly understand what you will. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And we all say, Amen.
Amen. Let us stand together as we dismiss benevolent. Okay. We have some ushers left. Brother Brown. Brother, Sister Pat. Let's take the benevolent offering. Thank you.